Greetings! Let's watch this video and try to answer the question what happened here? The question is why did this attempted IV cannulation fail? And then we will demonstrate the most common mistakes during IV cannulation that can make attempts at IV paradoxically difficult even in patients with well visible veins. And in the video we will also feature an augmented reality animation that will help you see three-dimensional explanation of the problem. And at the end of the video we will explain strategies how to avoid failure at an attempt to IV access in patients with veins like this. Here's an example of the seemingly easy veins. The application of the tourniquet in this patient quickly brought about a number of veins that are visible and palpable, so it looks like a no-brainer. However, what makes these IV accesses difficult is that the veins are tortuous and they have thick walls with lots of tissue elasticity around them, which makes them very easy to roll. And rolling veins are the description that is used for vein that tends to escape the needle stick. So these are rolling veins. They roll very easily when you push them, so it's extremely important to actually pick a point at which the two veins get together and then they are a bit more fixed. Here you can see the many veins here are prominent, but none of them appear to be straight and they tend to roll easily when palpated. When choosing veins like this, it is essential to keep in mind the following strategy. Number one, choose a vein that has clearly visible tributaries which stabilize the point of needle entry. Here's an example. Number two, Choose a vein that is reasonably straight, like this. Number three, keep the angle of needle insertion very low and consider pre-bending the needle catheter to be able to lift the tip up and remain superficial in the plane of the vein. Number four, advance the needle fast to penetrate the vein instead of allowing it to roll off with a slow speed. My personal preference here, my personal preference here would be Turn the handle around. Personal preference would be to take this vein right there. This okay. Way. Yes. Okay. This or that because it's it's fixed there. Here we chose the straightest vein and the one that also has tributaries for better stabilization. The practitioners here stabilize the skin nicely. However, the stabilization method used partially emptied the vein as the tension on the skin was across the area side by side instead of pulling the skin more distally, which is usually preferred as it does not empty the veins that much. Because of a violent prick, you know? A little bit more distal. Yes, like that. Okay. However, the needle entry at this attempt was too slow and the vein rolled away, resulting in a needle placement besides and underneath the vein and not into the lumen. Decrease the angle all the way down. Decrease the angle. There you go. Decrease the angle. Decrease the angle. You're going underneath the vein. As you can see, the needle is sufficiently deeply inserted into the skin and the vein is very superficial, which means that the operator has missed the vein and the vein rolled away or the needle is underneath the vein. There is simply no chance that the needle catheter will enter the lumen of the vein at this point. So you need to go back. Yes. Yes. Lift the tip up. Yes. It's difficult to lift the tip up yeah. unless you unless you uh, pre-bend. Okay. The practitioner here tries to pull the needle back, but because the vein is very superficial, the only way to do this properly is to take the needle completely out and reinsert perhaps at the same entry point. This is because if you do not take the needle out completely, the needle tip will continue to be placed underneath or besides the vein, making the consecutive attempts sentenced to failure from the get-go. Okay, can you go back, see if it bleeds? No, that's good. Okay, I use what I'm doing. Bended, bended uh, IV. Yes. 
Here the operator tries to bend the needle to be able to be more superficial, which is a good option, but not inside the skin or inside the tissue, because the needle remains inserted besides or underneath the vein, which is difficult to correct unless the needle is taken out completely for a new attempt. Multiple needle re-entries without taking the needle out completely led to the failure. Looking at the needle hub, it appears that the vein was not entered at all, but it would be wiser to leave the catheter in place since we made multiple attempts in order to prevent hematoma formation, and it's better to make another attempt with another needle while leaving the catheter in place. Now there appears to be multiple additional veins that could be a good potential for cannulation. Therefore the wisdom never rush to place an IV. Allow some time for the tourniquet to work. Here's another practitioner now who steps in and who chooses a longer IV needle catheter system. The new practitioner also bends the needle to be able to assume a very low angle of insertion, which is a technique that I really like very much and has helped me many, many times. Because it's very superficial. So this way I can actually make the lift. Okay, I'm going to take this and while we could choose a number of different veins at this point, we opted to demonstrate the importance of point number three and number four, which I mentioned earlier. Keep the angle of needle insertion very low and pre-bend the needle to be able to lift the tip up and remain superficial in the plane of the vein. Likewise, advance the needle fast to penetrate the vein instead of risking the vein to roll off with a slow speed. And I'm going to tense this. Here you can see how pulling the skin distally instead of side by side works better. Likewise, here we can see that the first catheter now has some blood in its lumen. This suggests that the first practitioner did go through the vein, but because of the lumen of the vein was diminished by side to side stabilization, there was no blood return in the hub of the needle as an indication of intravascular placement. Likewise, this proves that the strategy of leaving the catheter inside was a good strategy, as otherwise we would have a local hematoma which would make the new attempt more difficult, if not impossible. To make them Okay, I can see actually that there is a contributory here, so I'm going to use that opportunity to go underneath. Notice how the angle of needle insertion is very low and the speed of insertion is much faster, which allowed for the needle entry into the vein much easier. Okay, there you go. Okay. Notice how the catheter here had to be pulled slightly back because its tip was inserted up against the next tributary network which obstructed the needle tip. Pulling the catheter 2-3 millimeter back was all that was necessary to make it work. That's it, we're inside for sure, it's just that it's hitting the wall there, see this? There you go. And here, based on this, you could see that you went through the vein but because you could not lift it up, it went underneath the vein, mm -hmm. which is a common, common mistake. Again, you can see how we needed to pull the IV catheter slightly back to distance its step from the next venous junction. There you go. Okay, we open this one up. And then, you see here, the vein is hidden the the next vein up there, but all you need to do is pull it back and there's a flow right there. And here's the proof of the successful cannulation, a very nice IV flow. In summary, what we have demonstrated in this example is that easily visible veins are not always easy to cannulate, particularly when they have thick walls, they are not straight, and when the patient's skin has lost the elasticity which stabilizes the veins during cannulation. When choosing veins like this, it is essential to use this strategy. Number one, choose the vein that has clearly visible tributaries, which stabilize the point of needle entry. Number two, choose a vein that is reasonably straight. Number three, 
Keep the angle of needle insertion very low and consider pre-bending the needle catheter system to be able to lift the needle tip up and remain superficial in the plane of the vein. Number four, advance the needle fast to penetrate the vein instead of allowing it to roll off with a slow speed of needle insertion. And number five, leave the unsuccessful catheter in situ to prevent the hematoma formation until after the successful cannulation. And that was it, troubleshooting deceivably easy but turned out to be difficult IV cannulation. If you like our videos, be sure to subscribe and never miss the new ones. And please leave a comment on what you think were the mistakes here and what you would do differently. Greetings.